Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to my tutorial on basic expressions in After Effects. Now, I recommend you check out my basics tutorial before you try any of this stuff. Expressions can kind of be big and scary at first, but we're just going to look at two of the most simple expressions that can really add some oomph to your animated projects. So to start off with, I'm just going to drag my fish PNG into my sequence here. And I've provided this in the description underneath this video on YouTube, so you can follow along. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press S for scale. But instead of clicking the stopwatch, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and everything's going to turn red. So you can see we've now got red values here and some strange symbols underneath our scale parameter. And we've got this little box here that says transform.scale in it. Now this is where you write expressions, which are a way of automating animation in After Effects. I'm not a big coder, but there's a couple of really nice simple ones that you can use that can get some really nice effects. Expressions are similar to JavaScript and ActionScript in Flash, so if you've done some coding before, this should seem nice and familiar. But don't worry if you haven't. So the first expression we're going to look at is called wiggle. So we're going to type in wiggle, and then we're going to use parentheses and type 5, 10, close parentheses. Now make sure you don't press enter to finish this off, otherwise you'll get a new line in your code window. What you want to do is just click outside of the box. So what we've done is we've told it to wiggle five times per second within 10 pixels. So let's have a look at the result. You can see the scale is wiggling, it's randomizing within a 10 pixel radius, and it's doing that five times per second. So we're getting this really nice automated animation of our fish sort of bloating and wobbling around. So that's scale. So I'm going to undo that. And we're going to take a look at using wiggle on the position of our fish. So if we type P and click Alt or Option on the stopwatch, do the same. Wiggle 5, comma, 10 in parentheses. Click outside the box. We're going to get this interesting position wiggling where our fish is wiggling five times per second within a 10 pixel radius. And it's doing that for the position instead of the scale this time. Let's have a go at editing this expression. Perhaps we only want it to wiggle 0.25 times a second, but we want to do it within 100 pixels. Let's see what that looks like. So I press zero to do a RAM preview. You see we're getting a much slower wiggle but it's moving over a much bigger space. Let's try changing it to wiggling 50 times a second within 100 pixels. See what that looks like. You can see that's much faster and much more dramatic. And when you've got a really fast expression like this, it's sometimes a good idea to turn on motion blur. If you don't know how to use motion blur, I recommend you check out my motion blur tutorial. So you can see now the fish is really blurry. And we'll just give my computer a second to work out what that's going to look like. Because it's moving so quickly, the entire thing is going to be blurred out uh, when you have motion blur turned on. So I think it's almost done. There you go. So you can see we're getting a much more kind of photo real uh, wiggle there. I'm going to turn motion blur off. Let's take a look at doing some rotational wiggling. So I'm just going to undo all that. So next up, let's press R so that we can randomize the rotation. We're going to alt click on the stopwatch, and type wiggle parentheses 5 comma 10. And this time it's wiggling five times per second, but the 10 represents the amount of degrees. So it's wiggling in between that 10 degree boundary. There's 360 degrees that you could rotate around. So let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see the fish is rotating back and forth 
between those 10 degrees. But if we change that 10 to 360, it's got a whole 360 degrees to randomize itself within. So if we press zero now, you can see the fish is randomizing itself all the way around the clock. It's spinning round and round in quite a spectacular way. If we turn the amount of wiggles down to say 0.5, see what that looks like. Should be a lot slower. So there you go. So that's really good for mimicking something like a bouncing object, maybe one of those executive toys or a clock face if you wanted it to look kind of randomized. So there we go. So let's just alt click on that rotation to delete it or you could undo it. Let's just do one last example of wiggling. I'm going to press scale, S for scale and shrink my fish down a little bit and I'm going to do position keyframe just a normal one and I'm going to make it move across the screen. So we're not using any expressions, we've just got a nice linear animation which you've probably seen many times by now of the fish moving across the screen. But in this case, I'm going to combine a normal keyframed animation with expression. I want this fish to wiggle up and down and side to side as it's moving from left to right. So I've done a normal keyframed animation, but then I'm going to go over and alt click on this stopwatch, type in wiggle, parentheses 5, 10, click outside the box. And now if I do a RAM preview, we'll see that the fish is wiggling as it moves from left to right. So we've combined keyframed animation with automated animation using expressions. It's really nice and simple. So if you had a fish that was swimming against the tide, for example, and you wanted to give it a bit of a wiggle, or you just wanted to give it a bit more of a natural feel rather than it looking so linear, this is a really good way of doing it. So let's look at the second example of expressions. We've looked at wiggles. Let's look at randomizing. I'm going to alt click on this position keyframe and also just click on the stopwatch to wipe all of that animation. I'm going to put my fish in the middle and scale it up a little bit. And I'm going to press T for opacity. Now we didn't do any wiggling on the opacity because there's a much better expression to use with opacity. I'm going to alt click on the opacity stopwatch and instead of typing wiggle, I'm going to type random parentheses 50. I'm going to click outside the box. So if you do a RAM preview now, we can see that it's randomizing the opacity between 0 and 50. So if I change that value to 100, for example, it will randomize the opacity between 0 and 100. So we'll get that kind of flickering. So if you had a light bulb that you wanted to make flicker, this would be a really good way of doing it. But say if you want the opacity to randomize between 50 and 100, then you'd have to go 50, 100, and then After Effects will only randomize the opacity between those two values. So it won't go anywhere near zero. The lowest it will go is 50, and the highest it will go is 100. So there you go. That's basic expressions in After Effects. Have a go yourself, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hexjibber Colouring and Activity Book, and the Hexjibber Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.